Hi, in this video, we'll talk about type 4 delayed hypersensitivity reactions. Now, our immune system, in case of hypersensitivity, is hyperactive. And in this delayed type 4 hypersensitivity, it is known as delayed because the manifestations of this kind of hypersensitivity takes days to develop, at least 48 hours to 72 hours it requires to develop. Now, unlike other hypersensitive response, which are mostly antibody mediated, this hypersensitivity reaction, the type 4 hypersensitivity reaction, is T cell dependent and no antibodies are involved in this process. And among T cells, the Th1 population is key player in this process. Apart from that, macrophages and dendritic cells are involved in this hypersensitive reaction. We would take an example, we would take two examples and try to understand what is the science and mechanism behind the type uh, 4 hypersensitive response. Now first, uh, before the concept of type 4 hypersensitivity arise, Robert Koch in, 1900, in 1890s has shown that if we inject uh, tuberculin inside the skin of a patient, and he would measure the blister size after a few days, like after four or five days, and try to see how what is the diameter or what is the radius of this bump, and what is the area of this bump. Now, if the patient has TB before, after injecting the toxin, the bump size would grow. That means the manifestation of this kind of reaction takes at least four or five days. And after four or five days, if a bump is seen on the skin in the hand, that means the patient was earlier infected by the TB. But how this uh, process is happening was not known at that time. But he named it the tuberculin reaction. Several years later, people figured out the mechanism. And we would use a specific example, the poison oak dermatitis. The poison oak dermatitis caused by poison ivy is also an example of type 4 hypersensitivity. So first time when you get exposed towards poison ivy, what happens we would see. So poison ivy has one kind of uh, specific antigen known as uroshiol. Now this uroshiol would go inside, but uroshiol is a heptin, so it cannot evoke immune response by itself. Now uroshiol gets oxidized inside the skin and the oxidized form of uracil reacts with the skin proteins and forms a uracil adduct compound now which is immunogenic so it can evoke immune responses now first of all this immunogenic substance is engulfed by specific uh, dendritic cells or langerhans cells that are sitting under the skin so once they are endocytosed, they are broken down, chewed up and displayed onto the surface of class 2 MHC molecules. Now soon after that, some of the dendritic cell or the Langerhans cells would migrate along the bloodstream towards the near, nearby lymph node. And inside the lymph node, it would present the antigen to a T helper cell. Now the T helper cell, which would recognize these antigens, they undergo specific signaling. And as a result, they secrete a lot of IL-12. And if you know that, that IL-12 is one of the autocrine cytokines that would allow differentiation of uh, a naive CD4 T cell into a Th1 population. And it has been seen in case of delayed type 4 hypersensitivity that one, uh, the one subpopulation which is prevalent is Th1 subpopulation. So the naive T cell differentiates in rapidly differentiates into Th1 cells and their number increases over time. Now apart from these cells, uh, macrophages and dendritic cells were involved. Now let's just see what happens sec happens to the second exposure. Now once there is a second exposure, again there is a antigen presenting towards the T cell and the T cells would rapidly now proliferate into a Tibet uh, expressing Th1 cells. Now these Th1 cells would secrete several cytokines 
and most of the cytokines are pro-inflammatory like interleukin 1, interleukin 6, IF and gamma etc. And also it would secrete several chemokines. First of all it would create an overall, uh, overall increase in inflammation, redness and pain and the secondary response is they would attract more macrophages and dendritic cells into the site of uh, contact. So overall uh, inflammatory response would be evoked and more uh, migration of the macrophages would be happening. Now the peak of the reaction occurs 48 hours after the first exposure and thereby the name is the delayed type for hypersensitivity because the manifestation of this contact is occurring at a later stage and taking quite a lot of time. So that is why it is known as delayed type for hypersensitivity. If you like my video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.